Hello again, just wanted to show you a set of shelves I've been working on. They are physically lightweight to hang on the wall and they're visually lightweight because of this design where there's no solid back and the sides don't extend all the way out. So uh, I'm not going to show you everything in the video because a lot of it's just straightforward woodworking. Um, but I want to show you the design finalized and put together, um, kind of how it looks. And uh, then I'll go into detail on how I cut the, the sides and the back using Shaper Origin and Inkscape to create the drawings. So the, the construction here is pretty straightforward. The sides and the back start out as the same length. I cut dados on I into the side and back on the table saw. And um, they are symmetrical top and bottom. So I take the piece, cut this dado, flip it, cut this dado. So they're symmetrical. Uh, they don't have to be. That's just how I did it. And uh, so they line up. <clears throat> when you turn it around, you can see the shelves um, have a notch cut in. I also cut uh, a dado here so that the shelf would go in and you wouldn't see uh, an ending or a, the edge of the joint on the front. Um, so it, it just barely goes in here and it's a little deeper here. Cut that on the table saw at the same time with the same setup. So the key with that, and I didn't film that, the key is you cut all the, the dados here on these flat faces and then you go back with, a, with the blade stopped and you line it up again and then uh, raise the bit or raise the blade and then cut these and you'll get close enough. If, if the dado stack hasn't been touched, you just lay this over the blade get it lined up with your fence uh, set up and raise the blade, it comes out fine. So I didn't film that. So these two pieces uh, here, you can see the dado on the side here, these two pieces are just screwed together. Um, there's really no need for glue and, and all kind of stuff, it just makes a mess, you gotta clean up if you get any on the, on the face of it. So these are screwed together. Um, there's a little bit of glue in the side here and clamp just so that there's no gap or minimizes the gap on the side and keeps these together. Uh, and then there's just a screw that holds uh, this back piece into the shelf. That's it. So there's really little, you probably get away with doing no glue on this. Um, so that's, that's the basic structure. It, it's pretty lightweight, like I said, compared to something that has a whole back and full size and visually it's, it looks better. So what I want to talk about uh, and give some depth on is how I cut the curves and made them good and fair. And I did that using Inkscape, and I'll show you how I did that. Uh, and then I used my Shaper Origin, and I'll show you how to do that. And really, you know, for something like this, the, the other shelves I made, I didn't, I didn't have a Shaper at the time. I made them five years ago, something like that. And I just used a, you know, a piece of bendy plywood and and marked them out and cut them on my. I don't know, my bandsaw or something, and then fared them with a sander and a spoke shave or something like that. So definitely you could do that. You don't need Shape or Origin to make, to make this. Uh, same thing with the fronts of the shelves. You know, you can just fare that. You get one, you trace it onto the other ones, and, and you're good. Um, but I wanted to do it um, to see how easy it would be, and so I filmed it and show you how to do it. And so, you know, if you get into more complex shapes, um, you know, if you want to get into things that fit a little differently, then certainly Shaper would help because your, your lines would be precise and, and that sort of thing. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's finished with um, some uh, tried and true oil, which is easy. You wipe it on, come back uh, an hour later and, and wipe it off. So I'll show you the video how I did it and I hope you like it. I use Inkscape to do my drawings mostly because it's free, but it's easy to use. And so on this, I started out with uh, drawing the side or the back. They're the same, except for the back is three quarters of an inch narrower. And I drew some guidelines. That's an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom, and then uh, three quarters of an inch from the back. And actually this, uh, this board is too wide. I gotta make it narrower here, so. It's four inches wide and 32 inches high. Then I just drew an arbitrary rectangle and anchored it right on that corner there and then rotated it so it intersects right where I want it and adjust it a little bit. All you really need is something square to anchor. This actual size doesn't matter. I'm gonna do the same thing down at the bottom. 
and this is a pretty straightforward thing to do here. Now for the circle, if you have an idea of the arc you want and you know the distance, half the width of the arc, and you know how high you want it to go or how far you want it to bend in like this, then the radius is determined by this equation here. And so I use that um, to figure out the radius for the the back and the sides, which is the same, and the radius for the shelves. And then I drew a, a big circle in here and and connected it. So the, the radius was pretty big. It was 451 inches. I'm sorry, the diameter was 451 inches for the side here, so it's pretty big. And then what I do is I, I select them, and you can see I combine them, and it or take the difference, and it um, cuts those parts apart, and then you have that. And then you, you color it for shaper to make sure it's an outside cut. The last thing I'd say about the, uh, the drawing is make sure that your piece is, uh, when you're done, is the final size that you want it to be. Because when you, shape, when you change shape and um, the thickness of the lines that you're drawing with can distort it slightly. So just make sure it's the final shape when you're done. So I take it to uh, this simple jig. It's just plywood with a piece of wood on the end uh, for the for a stop and on the back end there for a stop uh, with some tape on it and make the cuts. I used a grid starting at that first corner and did the same thing with the shelf here. This one's in real time so you can see the speed of it. And I cut these to an eighth of an inch uh, just so I you know, could make it fairly quickly. And then I use the bandsaw to remove uh, the bulk of the waste uh, before taking it to the router. When I was done, uh, I took them to the router and flushed up the edge. And um, on the shelves, it's pretty straightforward um, because they're all the same, just one big line. You can see there's a little fuzz left there between the bit and the bearing, so I just flipped it over and ran that on the other side. Now for these pieces, um, you can see where the dado intersects that top edge at that point, got a little fragile, and um, so I ended up going not quite up to the edge, and I just used the uh, sander at the end to, to flush that up. And then the edge is similar here to the to the shelves. The big difference was this is the back piece and it's got that dado that goes along the back, you know, to the back as well. The, the side pieces had, that dado didn't exist, uh, but the dado on the face did and there was nothing for the bearing to ride against. So I needed to skip over that and then flush it up with a sand later. So this was pretty simple. It's easy, it's quick, takes that edge right down. This is uh, putting in the walnut inlays, and I didn't record this at all, but when the board was still square, I just routed a quarter inch groove uh, three inches down, and I knew about how far in that arc was gonna go, and I just made the, uh, the router bit about a quarter inch deeper and then just cut some walnut to fit in there and routed the edge so it fits the edge of that which is the quarter inch diameter bit and it fits in there real nice just use tape for clamps so i talked about how the back the shelves have a, a little notch in the in the back of them so they fit around the back and so that the back of the shelf is flush with the wall and doesn't stick out and then just use the the bandsaw to do this for all of them um, because there's that dado in the back this doesn't have to be perfect in length because it'll be hidden by that and you can see the as i put this shelf in there you can see the back notch and how it fits in there and put them in there that's it